Hey Gearheads, Steve here from Tech Support. We're bringing you a video today about configuring your new Maestro auto tracking camera. It's actually a really easy process and uh, I'm kind of excited to show you how this works because uh, for, for how well this thing works and how easy it is to set up, I, I think it's really pretty cool. So let's get right into it. For this video, we are operating under the assumption that you have already joined your camera to your local network. If you have not, check out our links above. We've got some helpful videos that will help you get that process uh, underway and completed. Once you've done that, go ahead and check on back in with us and we'll continue from here. So now that you've got your camera on the network, uh, we'll go ahead and log in. As you can see, I'm already logged in here and we are looking at our preview screen. This is actually where most of the configuration happens for this guy. On the configuration tab over here, there's a lot of things like your network settings and uh, video color and exposure settings, stuff like that. But for all the uh, auto tracking stuff, that's going to be right here on the preview settings. So what we're going to do to start with is we are going to set our panoramic position. What that is, is that's going to be the widest angle shot that you want this camera to take. And that works as kind of a default so that let's say it loses tracking. You can set it to default back to that panoramic position while it reacquires the target. This way, let's say you walk to one side of the room and it's still looking at the other. It'll zoom back out to that widescreen shot and it'll still capture you before it zooms back in and resumes tracking. That way you don't get any uh, dead air time of just looking at nothing. So uh, what I'm going to do is set my panoramic position here. Uh, in this room that I'm in, it's about a 20 foot wide room and I'm about 20 feet from the wall with my camera. So that kind of gives you an idea of what, what we're dealing with here. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here and trim this up because I don't need those side walls to be recorded at all. And once I do that, oh, looks like I cropped my TV a bit from here. I'm going to go ahead and save my panoramic preset. Next, we are going to set our platform preset here. What the platform preset is, is the zoom level that it tracks you at. So basically it's going to jump from the panoramic widescreen shot when it acquires a target it's going to zoom in on you and this is kind of the level of zoom that we're setting right now for this uh, platform preset so i'm going to zoom in here i know from experience that the top of my head is roughly as high as that tv right there and that way we can zoom in a little bit tight so we get a good torso shot and you don't see my skinny chicken legs and that makes for a much more uh, pleasing aesthetic when you're watching the video in my humble opinion so I'm going to go ahead and save this platform preset right here. And then the next step is to set our area. So we want to make sure to go back to our panoramic preset. We're going to click view on that because this is the window that we're going to draw our tracking area on that widescreen area. It's going to represent the trackable area of the image. So I'm going to go to area settings here and notice I see a little smaller window of what I already saw in my preview. I'm going to go ahead and click enable platform area and then I'm going to draw my platform area. So you can see this blue box right here is the, the area that was already set. You basically just click and drag with your mouse and draw this box out to the entire area that you're going to be moving around in. Let's say you weren't going to walk past this uh, little spot by the door here. You could just leave the platform area right there and it'll only track this area. Or if you want to use the whole room, just go ahead and draw it all the way. So once that's there, we jump over to mask area. Now what our mask area does is it blocks out things that might confuse the auto tracking. So things like TVs that might show an image of a silhouetted person or a doorway where somebody might walk through, we're going to want to mask those off. So that way the camera doesn't get confused and start tracking the wrong thing. So my first mask area, I'm going to go ahead and click enable. And then you have to click the title mask area as one, uh, mask area one as well, excuse me. That's very important. If you don't actually highlight it after you click the checkbox, it won't let you draw it. So you do the same thing. You basically highlight that and draw the mask over whatever it is that you're trying to block out. And then I'm going to go ahead and enable the second one and draw that here over the door. Once those are there, uh, they're auto saved and I can go ahead and close this and then I can click start on my tracking and it will begin the tracking process. So now we're going to go ahead and uh, jump over to Chris and let him do a little demonstration and a uh, big, big hand for Chris recently turned 50 the other day. So uh, happy birthday to Chris, old guy. And 
uh, take it away. Hey, gearheads. Uh, Chris here. Thank you, Steve, for showing us how to set up this amazing camera. I'm going to go over real quick uh, just how it tracks myself here. If I were a teacher and I were walking to my touchboard, for example, you can see the camera's tracking me. I can write anything I want on the board, and there is no issues with flickering um, or fuzzy pictures. Sometimes we get that call. People are saying I have an issue uh, with the camera when it's uh, viewed onto the actual TV, LCD, LED projector screen. Um, it doesn't look very good. As you can tell with the BJ Maestro 4K CMOS uh, Sony lens, it's got an amazing, amazing crisp uh, image, and there's no issues with flickering. I can write on this killer touch board. Steve, detention, tech support room basically equates to detention. This is his typical assignment of the day. <laughs> um, anyway, so if you're a teacher and you're looking for uh, a great camera that can track you while your students are uh, remote learning, or if you are a presenter, a speaker who has a stage and a platform, and you would like to have a camera that can track you without having to hire somebody or ask somebody to help control the camera, the BJ Maestro does this for you. Um, if you're a fitness instructor and you would like to film or video your uh, fitness sessions on YouTube, this camera is really affordable, great for fitness instructors, works uh, for yoga, uh, martial arts, weight training. Of course, if you're running across the entire room left and right, this camera is not going to keep up with that, unfortunately. Um, so as you can see, it's tracking me now at about a standard walking pace. You can adjust these settings a little bit. It does have some speed control. But overall, the camera works amazing. And for the price, it's really hard to beat. Um, simple to set up, as Steve demonstrated to you. But if you got any questions, we're always here to help at BZB Gear. Call our tech support. Uh, some of our guys, like Steve, would be more than willing to jump on the phone with you and give you some step-by-step -step instructions, as well as we have a knowledge base instructions on our uh, support page. And of course, videos. We love our videos. Our customers love our videos. We continue to shoot these to try to help you guys out. Um, but anyway, we're signing off here. If you got any questions regarding the BJ Maestro, please give us a call or an email. Uh, sales at uh, BZB Gear, tech support at BZB Gear, um, or just give us a call or a comment. Uh, please feel free to hit like and subscribe. We always uh, helps us with future videos to understand what our customers actually enjoy watching or are interested in. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.